I mean, it's three minutes. I'm going to start. Okay, so the, the, the brewing industry has changed, right? Now, with uh, the process of brewing and because we have IoT in play, um, manufacturing in general have applied IoT in their process. And so um, you see now that, you know, you, back in the days you, you had your silos, you got your grain and you got your grain and you, you started brewing and making the mash and we're going to go into the science of that. But now with sensors in play, you can actually embed the sensor and the IoT networks to make the decision and, and get consistent beer every time you manufacture. And that's why you have um, in like small little shops going into becoming a big brewery because they have they know how to make beer, but they also can track to the science, to the dot with the sensors that they embed, you know, what is the temperature that this this hop needs in order for it to basically um, release all its its flavor in the beer. And so with the recipes being available and you being able to control the temperature and humidity around your environment with sensors and using IoT gateways that you can apply AI to, you can actually make these decisions on the fly and adjust as your brewing process is happening. So combining that with data analytics tools, brewers can actually monitor the quality and consistency of beer. And with Cisco, I think, I know some of the Connected City guys are here. We have an entire manufacturing, and if you guys go over at IoT Manufacturing Solution, if you guys go over to um, the, the IoT demo and you see the robot, you know, most of these concepts are in there and you can see them as a solution, right? If you're doing a homebrew, you're not going to get that, but there's still a smaller solution. You can still buy cheap little sensors that you can put in your tanks the end result is the concept is the same, right? What you end up doing is you put in sensors, these sensors collect data, whether this is temperature, humidity, um, whatever it is that's required for you to, to process that brewing, to, the brewing process. And once you do that, then you have a gateway, and that gateway could be something like as expensive as an 829, or it could be a simple Arduino or a Raspberry Pi running a server, collecting the data, using some type of protocol, and that data is coming to you, and then you can run a script on top of that Raspberry Pi or Arduino to make a decision on what's going on. And then you can send that feedback back to your burner to increase temperature, back to your kegerator to lower the temperature, temperature if you're fermenting and whatnot, right? So you, you take away that, that human is essentially interaction and you put in logic and AI into your brewing process to get better quality beer. And I'm, I do that at home actually. So I have, I have a setup in my garage where I have a burner that's connected that I can monitor the temperature within the container itself. As I'm boiling up the mash and I'm doing my beer before I get to the wort, I'm actually monitoring what that temperature is and depending on my recipe and the hop that I'm going to pitch within, within my process, I actually have data points saying that at this temperature, you need to keep it consistent at 120 degrees. So I need to be able to monitor the content in there cons consistently to be able to do that, right? And then if the temperature changes, I can actually increase the burner to heat it up a little bit more or decrease it as, as it's needed, okay? So before I start talking about IoT and the different gateway and how, how everything works, um, let's talk about the science okay, behind making beer. And we can see where the, the points of insertions and in, in IoT is. <clears throat> so you start by having mash. You get, you get your grains, right? You get your hops, and you mix all of that in, into a uh, boil and you bring that to a temperature. Your mash are just and mash and, and and hops are essentially based on the type of beer that you want. You can also add, depending on if you're making a Belgian or a Pilsner or an IPA, you can add sugar to your mixture as you're boiling. So the first step, get mash, boil it up, and add water and the recipe depending depending on the recipe that you are trying to accomplish. 
The conversion process uses natural enzymes in the malt to break that malt uh, starch down into sugars. And the sugars is what we need, right? What we're after. That's what gets, ends up transferring or changing into alcohol. Okay, so we have a boiled mash. You consistently boil it for like two hours. Because you need that boil to be consistent at the same temperature, my little IoT icon here shows that, okay, here I can actually have a sensor and here I can actually maintain that temperature and get the feedback between my burner and my, 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 uh, my, my boiler itself, right? So that feedback coming back and forth, I don't have to sit there and monitor it. I can just leave it, set it, have it monitor and just watch a graph on my laptop that shows me that this boil is happening at a certain temperature. Once I have the mash boiled, I need to, that, that liquid or the, the, you create the wort. Wort is that liquid, that, that mixture that comes after the two hours, three hour boil that you get from your grains and your hops. And the wort is created, which is a sweet liquid. At this point, it's essentially just beer, right? But it, it's un, not unfermented beer. So wort is unfermented beer. You can taste it. You can try it. You can pitch in at this point at a certain temperature, depending on the hop that you're going to be using. You can pitch in the hop and have it sit there. If you're making an IPA, you get a different hop than you're making a Belgian. So it just depends on the recipe. And in order to get the best, the, the proper hop infusion into your wort, you got to actually read the label, the manufacturing label of the wort that, that says this wort will infuse at X temperature, right? So with IoT in play, you can actually find that sweet spot where you can pitch your hops in. So now I have my hops, I have my wort. I need to bring that to a boil. Again, with the help of IoT, I've, I've, I, I, I understand how long I need to keep my hop, hops in my wort in order to keep the, the flavor. And the wort is brought back up to temperature. And that's brought for a couple of reasons, to kill any germs that you've collected as you're, you're doing your boil process. And secondly, in order to infuse the flavor of the hop with the wort. So you control the boil is a key before the hops are added. Once you've kept your wort at a certain temperature, at a high temperature, in order to kill all of the, the essentially the bacteria or um, before you ferment, you have to drop that temperature completely below 65 degrees. So typically wort would be boiled at 120, and I'm talking um, Fahrenheit here, it's not, not Celsius. If you bring it up to 120, it boils for about 30 minutes. It's consistent boil for 120. If you Within, within less than 45 minutes, you have to bring that temperature down to below 65. And that kills any bacteria that has been collected as your wort. Because sanitation of the wort is what change, will change the flavor, right? So a clean wort a, with no bacteria would make it taste superb. So um, you're quickly moving the wort from to fermentation temperature and pitching the yeast minimize the impact of bacteria on the beer. Does that make sense so far? Okay. So at this point, we've, we have cooled wort. We've actually created an environment for the yeast to survive, right? So you have a couple of options. You can build a starter, which is basically yeast that's that it, the enzymes on, on steroids. So you can build that starter and then pitch it at this point, or you can just get yeast, the same yeast that you would use to for for your dough to rise and pitch it into your beer, into your wort. And depending on the type of yeast, it will tell you the temperature that that yeast will survive, right? So the, it will tell you ultimate, the, the ultimate survival uh, from the number of, of, uh, of yeast enzymes that are going to be uh, survive within that temperature is X amount. So you need to make sure that your beer is at this level when before you pitch your yeast and it takes about two and a half weeks to three weeks before it starts fermenting and the way it works is the yeast essentially eats up chews at the sugar and it spits out alcohol so the higher the sugar content in your wort the higher alcoholic uh, content you're going to get with your beer
Okay, two and a half hours late, two and a half weeks later, you essentially have um, basically flat beer. Okay, so you can choose to drink it, but don't do that. You can wait another week and a half or two, carbonate it, and then you can start serving it. And that's basically how you make beer. Okay. The insertion points for IoT is basically data points that you can go and utilize to your, advan your advantage. Instead of basically, instead of um, monitoring for two weeks consistently, having somebody there taking the temperature of the wart and potentially contaminating the wart, you can actually have a simple sanitized sensor within your, um, your keg itself that, or, or a thermal couple sitting outside of your keg that essentially reads what the temperature on the inside and the outside and averages that out and spits it out to a gateway somewhere. Okay, so this would, this would keep your fermentation temperature at the, the recommended Fahrenheit by the manufacturer, by the, by the, uh, by the, the yeast manufacturing. Okay, so this is essentially what happens if we to where to apply an IoT sensor network to our process here. You have a gateway, whether you have devices, these devices are your sensors, right? From a manufacturing perspective, it could be your trucks that are delivering your hops, right? A GPS sensor locating when the shipment is gonna come, when is your mash is gonna come, so you can prepare for your brewing. To all the way to the sensors that you have within your containers themselves, all this data is collected somehow in a potentially in a place where there is no network right so it could be a low um, a lower network low voltage network or it could be doesn't have to be an actual network but it could be a bluetooth network right and then all of that data is being somehow communicated from the sensors out to a gateway and that gateway could be an arduino raspberry pi it could be a cisco ir829 it doesn't really matter right the idea is it's a gateway, some compute that would run something on the edge to get that data. And then there needs to be a protocol between the gateway and the sensors to send data back and forth. And you have a couple of protocols that you can look into. One that's really lightweight, and we're going to see an example of shortly here is MQTT. Have you guys heard of MQTT? Yeah. OK, so you can send data back and forth between your gateway and well, you can send data from your sensors to your gateway using the MQTT protocol. And it's very lightweight, and I'm going to show you guys how MQTT works. And once you have the data in your gateway, you have a couple of options. It's if you're running 829, for instance, with IOX on it, you can actually put your logic on the box itself at your gateway on the edge to filter the data, to take action or send a feedback back to the manufacturing to change some values to your controller that's controlling your heating element to adjust the temperature, right, to what's needed. So you can do that all between these two. But if you're satisfied with the data that you want and you want to be able to dashboard it, for instance, or send it out to um, an AI to see when is the ultimate time to, from the time the mash and the, the grains and the hops are delivered to the when we can start brewing, you can send that out because this has connectivity. You can send that out to the cloud and build something on top of it, an application on top of it. Does that make sense? Okay. So before I start digging into protocols, let's let me answer any questions on what we've we've talked about so far. If you guys have any, it's pretty straightforward. It's some cool stuff actually. All right. Let's look at the IoT. What is MQTT? MQTT is a lightweight messaging, queuing, and transport protocol. It stands for Message Queue Telemetry Transport. And it's essentially suited for mobile to mobile, or gateway to gateway, sensor to gateway communication. You have a lot of options out there for you to leverage. There are, there, but some of the characteristics, good characteristics of MQTT, it's asynchronous. It has low overhead, and it uses a published subscription method. So the sensor would publish to a topic, and you as an end user to monitor the sensors, you would subscribe to that same topic, and you would receive the data. Okay? 
And that server, the broker, could be sitting, running on the edge at your gateway, or the MQTT server could be sitting in your cloud and the data being sent back and forth, okay? And it's great because it, because it runs on TCP, it's also secure. So this is how you publish data back and forth. You're a publisher, you send a JSON, you send plain text, you send an XML out to the broker. The broker receives it and says, okay, I have 10 subscriptions to that topic. I'm gonna to broadcast out all these messages. That you can subscribe a dashboard that listens straight to your MQTT topic, or you can subscribe a Python script that sits and reads that JSON that comes back and apply logic to that, right? So it doesn't matter what it is. It could be a human that's just reading text going back and forth. All right, I have five minutes. I'm gonna show you how MQTT works, okay? So this is what I have. There's, they have plenty of MQTT brokers out there that you can leverage. Hive MQ is one of them. It's a free open source one that you can just go. They actually have a broker for you to use Hive. I think it's called hivemq.mqtt.com. Um, you can go and create a topic. And so there are a couple of pieces, right? If you're looking to just use a command line pub sub to test out, and let me zoom in so you guys can see this. Mosquito is also an MQTT client and a broker. It's called Mosquito. Mosquito can be, a, can, it's very lightweight, so you can install it and set it up and start publishing and subscribing to topic from connect, command line, or you can use their entire broker, deploy it somewhere in a VM in your infrastructure, and you would have your own personal broker, okay? So in this case, I wrote a simple script. The simple script essentially just publishes to a topic, and I did this in Python just to show you guys how, how it's done. So I have data. This is um, trying to zoom in on this. I have, yeah, you can't see this at all. Anyway, <laughs> I tried. Okay, I have I have data, and, and bear with me here. I'm I'm not able to zoom in. Can you? Can some of you at least see this? Okay, cool. So I and I'm I wrote this simple Python script, and you would typically do the exact same thing if you're actually subscribing from a topic but the steps are the same. You go in and you use an MQTT client library called Paho. So if you've programmed in Python, you just pip install Paho. And Paho is, will allow you to subscribe and publish to an MQTT topic. In this case, all I'm doing is I wrote a sample script that would generate what would look like a, uh, a JSON data coming back from your brewing manufacturing. Right, the style of the beer, what's the temperature, at and which level at which level it's being brewed. At what's what is the what what is the fermentation level or the brewing level in this case? And all I'm doing is I'm publishing that to an MQTT topic called DevNet slash brew. So if I run the script. This would be a sample of sample of data that you would be seeing from that would your gateway would be receiving, right? Just the temperature coming out of your the fermentation stage, the status of your brew, you know, the type of beer that you're doing. And as a because I'm getting this data, I can subscribe and listen to it. So I have my broker. If I go mqtmosquito.publish dash h 
connecting to the broker, the same broker that this, this topic is in and defining the topic, in this case, DevNet Brew. Sorry, I'm not trying to publish. I'm trying to subscribe. So Mosquito Sub, I'm now subscribing to that topic because I have the topic is being published. There's data being published to that topic. I'm trying to subscribe dash H, the broker. This is a free broker that I'm using, broker.hivemq.com. And then I got to subscribe to a specific topic. If I go subscribe to this, I'm, I can see the data that's being broadcasted to my gateway on that from my sensor network, right? So I have... I have, I'm brewing, uh, my brewery is called DevNet and I'm brewing Coder's Paradise Lager. And um, it's a score of 5.47 on uh, brew DB. And I'm getting the temperature from at that stage. At this point, I can actually make a decision on, well, if I'm fermenting and the fermentation level needs to be at 63 Fahrenheit as opposed to 65, then I can actually go back to my controller and say, hey, I need you to, I need you to lower the temperature in the fermentation chamber so it would reach 63 so I can assure a decent fermentation. So you can see how useful this is in, in any really any manufacturing process. It doesn't have to be beer. Anyway, I'm glad you guys joined me and I'm glad it's not three people, but this is all I have for you today. I appreciate your time. Thank you so much.